All right, welcome back everyone to week three of the class. Uh, this is the week where we're going to set ourselves up for the rest of the semester to have this project that will be an interactive game. And so there will be a homework that ties into that, that you're able to create this project. And the reason we have to spend time on it, it's got to be set up in a very specific way, different than what we've done before, where we create an HD quality movie and we're ready. This needs some setup. We started to look at that setup last week on Wednesday. Uh, so be sure to watch that video as well, plus what we will be talking about today. And because you have to set this up in a very specific way, you want to make sure you understand it perfectly this week. Because if you don't want to have trouble later on, you need to make sure the basics are set up properly this week. That's why there'll also be a homework. That's why I remember there will also be help in person here in the lab, uh, lab times as well. And then also the assistants are able to help you at home via Zoom. So make sure this stuff is set up perfectly or else these little problems will add up into big problems in the future. So if you look on Canvas, you will see that week three is not active just yet. There were a couple of problems with it, so I will activate that after class, but it'll be the usual that we've got in a particular week and then the details of the assignment. <clears throat> so uh, don't worry that there's no week three at the moment. I will activate it most likely if those of you that are watching the recording later, it'll be active by now and no problem. Those of you that are here live right now, Again, there's not a week three yet. It'll be activated soon. I'm going to write a few notes, theoretical notes first, and then we will do some hands-on stuff. Notes on Canvas, of course. I need to talk about some things in theory first, and then in practice. So we have CIS 126 week three. And um, the first thing actually note, uh, Wednesday is a holiday. So the newest holiday that was invented in the U.S. since Martin Luther King Jr. Day back in 1983, I think, uh, was founded maybe two, two and a half years ago, which is Juneteenth. This is the newest holiday. And... It falls on a Wednesday this year, and uh, that means we will not have class. We will not have a live class in person or on Zoom. It's a holiday. There'll be some extra credits, so um, check Canvas. I'm going to activate an extra credit thing on Wednesday. If you want to do it, it's extra credit. Extra credit is always nice, but just be aware that there will not be class this Wednesday. And we just need this Monday, we'll be able to cover what we need today. Here's the things that we will need to cover. So the topics that we will get to. Setting up Adobe Air SDK for game creation. We saw a version of that last time. Today we'll look at it again, but in more detail, which is different and is necessary for setting up a game project in Animate. We did do that previously. Setting up publish uh, details. We didn't do that yet. Setting up publish details. We've got debugging on virtual or simulator devices. We did a bit of that last time. And then new today, debugging on real devices. We'll do that this time. So that ties into homework being able to do this on your own for the homework assignment. I will, again, I will activate the module three after class, but basically what we're gonna learn today is gonna tie directly into what you need to do for the assignment. And this week is all about a setup so that on the future weeks, we're able to actually do the coding, do the interactivity, work on the actual game, but we need a step zero all of this is step zero before we can do any of the future steps. We've touched on some of these already, so they should not be brand new. 
They should be something that you remember we did. And a few things will be new um, that we haven't covered yet. So as usual, I'm going to be recording. I'm currently recording all of this so you can refer back to it. We will have our lab times Mondays and Wednesdays, except this week, Wednesday, uh, 2.30 to 3. And then also the assistants are reachable via the Canvas inbox for some one-on-one -on -one Zoom help as well, as well as me. Um, I did manage to catch up on all of the grading from the model sheets. I thought they were very impressive. I gave you points and feedback. Go check on Canvas for my thoughts. You can go check the grades. And I gave you some thoughts on your work. Pretty much everyone did a very, very, very good job back on the week one assignment. The week two assignment is due tomorrow. I started to see a couple of submissions so far. They look good as well. This is what I'm looking for, you know, looking, going through the various uh, screens and concepts. Perfect. There's another example over here. Same idea. Perfect. And then a little reply there. So, yep, yeah, make sure you do the assignment due tomorrow. And remember that it is uh, your heart and replies. So everyone, please reply in time so that your classmates can reply and everyone gets full credit. You do need to do these reply parts, not just your post, but also replies. Yeah, this looks good so far as examples. Yep, that'd be what I'm looking for. And... Um, For the real devices, when we get to that, um, they're being set up at the moment. But today, later on, all of you that are here in person, I will give you an actual Android tablet to borrow to, to learn the full knowledge of it. If you want to then do this at home on your own phones and such, I'll talk about that as well. But for that, everyone is able to do it. I'll, we'll do it together with real devices a little bit later. Those of you that are at home, of course, you'll need to follow along and ask for help for how this all works on your own system, uh, because you'll be able to do the class on a virtual device, but I do want to then also show, well, how do you do this on a real device so that I have a real tablet that can actually tap and do it on a real device? We'll cover both of those this week. Right, so... um. The very first step that I've got here, setting up Adobe Air, we did this last time. We'll do it again. And every time you come to the lab here, you will have to do this. But if you do this on your own home computer, your, your own personal computer, you just do it once <clears throat> and then it'll work. Here, you have to do it every time because we've got a deep freeze. It erases itself. The computer erases itself every time you restart the computer for security, for safety. But then that means that you have to do this step every time. On Canvas, I, I have the instructions there too, once I activate it, uh, but we will do it together here. So this is basically um, follow the link to download, unzip, and save the file. What link? I'll show you the link in a moment. Follow the link to download the, the file. Then in animate, you go to the help menu and it's under manage Adobe Air SDK. Ready to work. These two steps here have to be done first on our computers. You don't need to download this, it's ready for you. On your own home computer, you will have to download this, unzip it, and save the file once. But on our computers, you have to do this every time. The file has already been downloaded onto the C drive. To the C drive, there's a folder in there waiting, Air SDK. That's the thing that you would manually go and download, unzip and save it somewhere on your computer, on the desktop, leave it in the downloads folder, put it in programs, I don't know, save it in documents somewhere. For us, it's gonna be waiting for us in this, just on the, on the C drive when you open up one of these, you know, my computer, C drive, it's right there ready, ready for us. And notice the little pop-up here. Well, this is about 1.3 gigabytes. 
It's a big file. It doesn't come built in with animate. This is an extra advanced thing. So you have to do an extra step. Link that file. <laughs> I'll put the link in the notes and in the chat. But getting that file, the very first time it's going to ask you to do this. This for the moment. But it's going to give you a link to follow. This is the link. Chat, it's also here. Again, you don't need to um, do this in the lab here. It's already done for you. But at home, it would ask you, okay, enable this, follow this link. Again, we saw this last week as a reminder. You just have to say, yes, I accept the terms. And then I download either the Windows or the Mac version. Most of you, I don't think anyone is running Linux. If you are, tell me in the chat. Uh, most people don't. You either have Windows or Mac. And so on either of these, you're going to download this. Ignore this thing about the Flex developer. You don't need any of that. You need the one up here on the full air SDK, either Windows or Mac. Once it downloads on Windows, you usually need to right click the file and select extract. And then it'll extract itself as a regular usable folder full of a bunch of stuff. On the Mac, usually when you download from Safari, it will automatically unzip it for you. You just save it somewhere. So download it, extract it, and then in animate, this is the part that we do need to do. Even if you did it last time, your, your computer forgot. So we have to do it again. So the first thing we're going to do right now, make sure you're in animate, of course. And then go to the help menu. Go to manage Adobe Air SDK. little screen here you need to add so the plus symbol there add a new SDK as I said this is already waiting for us on these computers waiting for us on the C drive double click this the Windows C drive double click the air SDK folder just click select need to click on anything else in this folder just click select it says, okay, you've got version 51012. If yours is a different version, don't worry about it. It's just that on our computers, this is the one we currently have. And um, I think here, what is this one? Okay, it's 51013. So on the latest version, if you were to download it brand new, you've got the five, you've got the x.x.x3 where we have the dot two. I don't know what the full difference is. It doesn't matter. But in this case, we have uh, the 51012. All right, once that has been activated, click OK. That is step one here. We set it up. Work. To get our work done, well, we need to set up a game project, which has been different than what we've been doing for the previous weeks and as well as back on part one. We're no longer going to be using the HD quality preset because that one was for a movie, a, a passive project. Now we need to work with an interactive project and it's different. So ignore all of these right here. And you want to go up to the new or file new or more presets. I'm just gonna click the new icon, new file. From the top tabs, um, it's, it's not the one we were previously using. It is now under advanced. We have the option right here of Air for Android. As I said previously, you might have an iPhone but for the purposes of learning how to do this in class, go ahead and select the Android one. Uh, whatever you're learning here will be equivalent for the iPhone version, but it's just easier to teach everyone if they're on the same page. 
um, and therefore uh, everyone's going to choose Android. Um, setting up here, Air, therefore Android is what you need. And I'll also make here a tip. As I said, we're all going to be on the same page. We're all going to be learning the same thing. But our tip here, as we learn the basic ingredients together, you should work on your own side project. Together, we're going to create this haunted house thing that I've previously shown. But I know that all of you have ideas of your own plot. Of course, I want to see a game based on your idea together so that we can just learn the basic concepts. We're making a haunted house game. On your own, you should create your own empty brand new document and do the things that we've been learning, but on your project with your own idea, your own plot. I'm going to eventually on the final project, you're going to have a choice of which one to turn in. If you turn in my haunted house project, that's fine. It'll be acceptable for the class because you got a project to work. But if you're also on the side working on your own version, that would be better because you're doing your own idea. Now, the challenge there is, yeah, you've got two projects to work on, but I think that's good in terms of you learning the basic ingredients together and then doing those things on your own because it's one thing to do things right, just like the instructor did it, it worked, but the instructor is not always going to be with you. You're going to be learning on your own, working on your own. So you might as well get the practice of working on your own idea as well. So we're going to learn the haunted house project. You should also work on your own great idea, whatever your plot is. If you need some help setting up that, of course, ask me or the assistants during class or on Zoom and such. Um, but together, we're going to work on one thing. And on your own, you should also work on your own idea. So together, here in the new document, we're going to work on the AIR project. And we're going to make one little change here. So these dimensions are obviously different than what we've been working with with the HD project, the movie project. Uh, we're not going to select the HD quality size, but we are going to uh, set this up as a landscape project. Right now, this these dimensions are vertical. We have 400 pixels, 480 pixels wide and 800 tall. If our game were vertical, these are the perfect dimensions for a vertical game. Our game is going to be landscape. I want our game to have a nice wide angle view so that you see the scene well and interact well. So we're going to switch these numbers over. So instead of 480 by 800, we're going to do 800 by 480. So the first thing to set here, this will be part of the homework also. Let's change this to 800 by 480. I'm just going to flip the numbers. I wish there was a little button here just to flip my numbers. But go ahead and flip those from, make those backwards like this. This will create a landscape type of a project. If you decide, well, on my idea, I want it to be vertical. Great. On your idea, make it vertical. For the class project that we're learning together, it will be horizontal. Frame rate, let's keep it as 24 FPS. That'll be some nice smooth animation. We don't need, you know, a 60 frame rate. Um, type of project like, uh, like you know, CSGO or whatever, but uh, this will be good enough for our animation to be smooth. So this will be one of the things that'll be in the assignment. Make sure you do it right. By now you should know that when I do the grading, I am picky about the details. If you don't do the details, you don't get the good grade. So that's one place to make a mistake. Make sure you flip these over. Click Create. My usual zoom out so I can see everything. I'm going to change my canvas color to anything besides white. And then we will save, save as. As usual, we will create a project folder. Always get in the habit of creating 
folders for your projects. You often have some weird bugs that happen if a project is not in a folder for some reason. So just be safe in a folder. Call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna put today's date. So set up a project, Air for Android template. Set horizontal dimensions. That would be 800 by 480 at 24 FPS. Change canvas color. Set change background color. It's the official name, stage. Yeah, stage. Set your stage color, the background color of your project. Save as to a folder. Make sure you save it to a folder. Call it whatever you want, but put it in a folder. Right now, here's a part where you can all remind me from Wednesday. Since we are gonna make an interactive project, we're gonna write code. What was that first step we needed to do before we write any code that we did on Wednesday? Remind me there in the chat box. Before I can write some code to make my project interactive, does anyone remember what was, what did we need to do? How did we set up our project to add code to our project? Enable touch support, very good. Where, how, that's a good step one. We need step zero before we enable touch support. How do we do that? Where do we do that? On the right track, what is step zero? So if I have trees on my screen, that is an answer. If I have my character on the screen, that is an answer. If I have code in my project, there is an answer. What am I looking for? It's so basic that we might think it's too basic of an answer, but what do we need to do before we write any of our code? Remember, we were adding code somehow before we enabled that touch feature and such. We, some, we, we had to do something, which is something we've done before, but then it was tied specifically to the code. It's not a trick question. Anyone remember what we did on Wednesday? Add the script. You're almost there. Take one step more back. Where, how, what? What does that mean? Add script. That's right. We're going to add code. But what specifically does that mean? We're almost there. Just like I'm adding this amazing game character right here. Well, what are, what is the like step zero of me adding that character there, which is the same answer for adding script, adding multi-touch, adding the capabilities adding, setting ourselves up to be able to make that code, to write to that code. What is that step? Hello. In a moment, ask the assistant to catch you up because you're a little behind. So make sure you turn on the computer and ask for help because you're behind. So what we need to do, trick question, create a layer. That's what we're getting at. Um, enabling touches by writing script, yes, but we do that in a layer. Yeah, it's such a basic answer, but it has to be done because computers are dumb. So first step right here is then add code in its own layer. It's, it's a basic answer, but it's almost like it's obvious, but we have to say it in its own layer. And you can just often call your layer AS or call it code or actions or anything like that. And therefore the um, 
the, the layer is very important because you're going to lose track of your code. Code could exist anywhere on a layer, on a frame, in a symbol. So keeping track of it is very important. So in our project right here, let's create a layer. Now, actually, tell me in the chat, what do you want to call this? Script, AS, code, magic, you know, what name do, should we give this layer? What helps you to remember what's in it? Just like if I were to call this layer main boss, well, that reminds me what's in that layer. Tell me in the chat what, remi what would remind you if we call this layer something to remind us that that's where all of the magic happens of our interactivity. I'm used to calling it AS because there's action script code there. If there were HTML code here, I might call it HTML, but we're focused on action script. So I'm going to call it AS, but tell me in the chat, what do you think? AS code, um, actions. Sometimes people call these actions. You can also call it scripts or script. Whatever you like, I'm going to call it AS. So add a add, to add code in its own layer, call it AS or anything you wish. We're setting up our project here. Basic codes. Two, well, there's like three. Basic codes, stop the animation. There is also activate touch. And then there is also credit. I call that something else. But then I want three codes at the beginning to start off with. So in our AS layer, let's open up our code, right click actions. So it was a very, very complex code. Tell me in the chat, what was the command so that our animation doesn't automatically play? There was one command, there was one code that prevented the automatic playback. And 99% of the time, that's the first code you want. Anyone remember in the chat box, how do we do that? When we do this first code here, tell me in the chat. I guess it was such a complex command that no one remembers. It was stop. So that's the first command we're going to add right there so that the project does not automatically animate. We don't want it to go on its own. We want there to be interactivity. If you don't add this code here, the project is just going to play from the first frame to the last frame all on its own, like the runaway train. This is the first command we want, basically. So again, when we do the homework, I'm going to be looking at these specific things. Make sure you do these specific things. And it's not just for the homework, because if you, again, if you don't set up these little things, you're going to have big problems later. Uh, your whole game will, even if you write up 500 lines of code and you forget this one line on line one, your game will not work. You'll get a bad grade. Even if you wrote, you know, 499 lines correctly and you have one line wrong, this is a big problem. So maybe add yourself a note. Stop the auto play animation. It's very recommended to give yourself comments the, um, and in the code to explain the code for yourself, especially if you're a beginner. This one is just the stop. It's written in a very specific way, right? It's all lowercase. You've got the opening and close parentheses. You've got the semicolon at the end. Activate touch, that'll be our second command. 
So this one is also written very specifically. Once you have one example of it, you can just copy and paste it. Multi-touch, capital M. Dot input mode, capital M. Equals multi-touch input, capital I. Mode, capital M. Dot all capital letters, touch underscore point. That's another one. If you don't have this, the project will just not work. You wrote 500 lines of code, but you forgot this one. Nothing will work. Now, how I'm going to do it, though, is I'll put my comment right here, and then I'll put my next comment right here, activate touch mode. Very important. Capital letters must be perfectly typed, right? If that's lowercase, that's not real. Capital M, that's correct. Capital T here, that's not correct. So it's got to match this. Again, I'm going to put my examples in Canvas. You'll always be able to check my code. You can take screenshots. This is all being recorded in the lecture. You can take a, a photo. You know, I'll be happy at the end of the lecture. You can say, hey, can you go back to, you know, frame 99? And I say, yeah. And then you can take a photo of it. That's fine. Whatever way will be helpful to you, especially as a beginner, because this, this is a new language. And it's got to be written perfectly. One way to make sure you're typing it right also is notice the colors are correct. Notice how multi-touch over here is blue and multi-touch input mode is blue and then input mode is black, touch point is black. Notice all of these details are also very specifically typed and capitalized and such. That's very important. Then the third item that I've got here is the um, credits. This is kind of optional, but it's very useful because you want to take credit for your hard work. You are right. You're going to be writing the code and you're going to be making it work and it's going to be your project. And in the world of programming um, and creative endeavors, it is um, often uh, a, a, a tactic that people, you know, give themselves credit. And that is simply that you you write a little bit about who made the project and some details. Credit is add your uh, info as a programmer. This actually before any of my code, and I'm going to do this in the multi-line comment like this. Remember when you have those that code there, anything in between is a comment, and then that ends the comment. The single line comment is very useful to write one note, and then the multi-line comment is useful to write multiple comments. Exactly, so we have right here, a reminder of what are some good ideas to put on this. This part is optional, but it's very useful. So name, you know, who is the creator of this project? Put your name. Project, what's the name of the project? Date, what is the current date that I'm working on this project? Any notes or description? <laughs> yes, if you're working on a team project, on the notes and so forth, like who is responsible for that particular frame or scene or code. So obviously, here your name. What is this project? Haunted House Adventure. It's today's date. So however you want to write this, June 17, 2024. Or you want to write it as numbers, right? Today is 6, 17, 24. Or you want to write it really nerdy and correct. You can write it this way because in that way you can keep track 
a little bit easier as the days progress when you work on your projects. The year, month, and date, plus also the leading zero, is the most programmer way to do this. But whatever way you want to date it in description, a point and click game where you progress through a haunted house and interact with on screen elements. Pretty useful, definitely. Yes. So for this, make sure you put the multi-line comment. If you do the double slash, well, that's not going to work because that doesn't mean multi. That doesn't mean multi-line. That means single line. Sometimes people do it this way: that on every single line they put that, and that's fine. But you have to manually put it on every single line. It's fine. But you saw that instead, it's just faster to set it up like that, forward slash, asterisk, write your comments, and then asterisk, forward slash. Right, The backslash is back. It leans back. The forward slash leans forward. And make sure there's no space in between those two symbols. They must be together or else notice that becomes regular colors. It thinks those are commands. No, they should be grayed out because they are comments. And remember, if this stuff is too small, if you want to zoom in to see your code, you can hold control on the keyboard and then scroll wheel up or down. So control then scroll wheel to zoom in and out of your code. And I'll usually do that for all of you to be able to read things properly. So whatever you want to write as a note. This is uh, this doesn't affect the game, but it sets you up as a real programmer. And again, if you were to put this, save this on a folder somewhere, and then come back a year later, whatever notes you wrote here could be useful to remind you about your project. And if you work in a team, this is useful as well. And for the homework. I will be looking for these things because, again, I'll put my example code up there. And one way that I'll know that you're not trying is for you to just copy and paste my code, including my comments. This is a trap for me to see that you're actually doing your own code. So here's our basic setup for our code. This is all happening in an action script layer. This is all our setup. Actually switch the order of these for a moment. I'm gonna do debugging and then publish and then real devices. It's the process of checking that our code works properly and even though this isn't really doing anything yet, at the very least, we have a few places where we can misspell our code. What if I missed I missed my coding and I didn't notice it? Will I want animate to check my code that is in the debug process? We're going to get used to this. We did it last week. We're going to do it over and over as the time goes on. So next step, up on the debug window. We have debug movie. Today, a little later, we're going to see debug on devices. Once we charge these up, we will pass these out in a moment. We will all give you these tablets and see how it actually runs on real devices very soon. We cannot do that yet. We have either desktop or mobile. We're focused on a mobile project, of course. So let's go to debug, debug movie, mobile. not get any errors. If it gave you an error about, um, there's, a, there's a mistyped code here, you have to fix that. If it gave you an error about 
you can't debug a project that has no code. Okay, that means you haven't created an AS layer. You haven't added your stop command. Back for a moment. If you got an error, make an, an error on purpose, an accident. Let's say I type something wrong. It's not going to pop up the simulator. It's going to pop up this compiler error panel. Saw this last week. We will see it a lot as time goes on, unfortunately, because computers are dumb. If you don't type your code perfectly, it'll get confused. And as a reminder, even though this gibberish over here might not make sense, what's very important about this screen, this panel, is that it's telling you exactly where to go to find your error. Go to scene one, go onto your layer called AS, go onto your frame one, go onto your line 12 of your code, column one, there's something there. What's useful here is you can double click and it'll take you right to the part where it detects the error, fix your error. But why doesn't it just say you mistyped stop? There could be a command that we invent called stoop. You know, stoop down is a thing. The computer doesn't know that you don't mean to do the command of stoop. We, of course, mean the command of stop. But all it's going to tell you here is call or usage of a possibly unknown command stoop. That's what it's trying to tell us. And by following double clicking, it'll tell you where that message was, where that error is happening. Dictionary terms and definite dictionary definitions. Oh, yes, that um, what is the word and what does it mean? Yes, the definition of it, the meaning of it. All right, getting back to debug mobile. Remember, once you've selected, one, once one of these has a check mark, you can save yourself some clicks by just going to debug movie, the first thing. Once you've set one of these, you can just do debug at the top or keyboard shortcut, control, shift, enter on the number pad. But that's trying to tell you is if you do control shift and then enter on the number pad over here, that's equivalent. That's a that's a faster way sometimes than going up to the top over there, control shift enter. To my project, there's my simulator. We're gonna remember to do this every time again. Go to your touch section, activate layer. I would recommend also relocate it. And then now we have a finger to interact, nothing to interact with but at least I didn't get any errors down there. Put it up. Remind me in the chat here. What was the command to give yourself a message that appears down here in the uh, output panel? Remember I told you, it will tell you when you did it wrong. Yes. Trace parentheses, quotation marks. Perfect. Thank you. Exactly. Trace. It won't tell you if you did it right. Uh, right. It'll tell you when you did it wrong. So one way is we can tell ourselves. So let's do that. Let's go back to our code. And on the next line here, you can say, uh, write ourselves because only us, the programmers, will see a trace message. This will not appear on screen. There's another way to do that. We'll learn that later. Write ourselves a message. It's trace, parentheses, quotes, semicolon at the end. And whatever you want it to say, make it say it. Save it. Debug it. So do that. Give yourself some trace message. Whatever you want it to say. And see the result. But this will prepare us for save the code. Sorry, write the code, save the code, run the code, debug. And then do that, everyone. Add a trace method there. Check the result. Head, 
Everyone, go ahead and do the check the result. Once you add a trace command, you'll see out on the output, have your message. Now there's a very, very minor thing. It's kind of subtle, it might not be noticeable, but this will be something that if you don't notice this, it's gonna affect your grade. The simulator at the moment is basically showing me as my, um, showing that my device is vertical, but didn't we set ourselves up that this is supposed to be a landscape type of project? We set ourselves up as a 800 by 480, not 480 by 800. Do you see here how it's popping up as a vertical device. And even if I kind of move my phone around like this, it's it's not fully changing it there. Um, this gets into the next part of the lecture, which you need to be you need to do this, of course. This will affect your grade. This is the part about setting up published details. Right. So if we go back to our project. Go up to the file menu. Oops, slightly. There's two sections, publish, settings, and air settings. I, I meant more the air settings rather than publish. Let me change that in my notes. This is the part here, set up, right, setting, set up air settings. That's what I'll call it, set up air settings. Let's do this. Let's go to file. Let's go to air. Uh, down here at the bottom, air 5104 Android settings. Let's go to that screen. There's a bunch of panels here that we need to set up. They're not too complicated, but I, I've got to explain them. This is one of the things you need to do in the beginning here. This is one of our setting, setting up steps. So let's make sure we can do this on the file menu, air, Android settings. There's a bunch of things. Action script settings, don't worry about that. Public settings, don't worry about that. We wanna go to file, air, Android settings. Let's start backwards. Instead of from general to the right, I'm gonna start from the right to the left. It doesn't matter, we need to do all of these. We need to set up all of these, but I wanna start with this one over here first. So this is gonna be eventually, very soon actually, an app that runs on a real device. And so we need to set up aspects for this to work on a real device. Language. Set the language below that will be supported in your app. So here we have all of these languages that we can activate. Now, this doesn't mean that your app will automatically be translated into Danish or Czech or Japanese or Portuguese. This just means that when someone wants to download this app from the App Store, it will be in the English section or the Italian section or whatever. This is not that it will auto translate to the app for you. That'd be amazing but it, that's not what this does. So for the moment, the only thing we really need here, unless you know you're making it in another language at the moment is let's put English. If you know that you're also gonna make it in Russian, you can activate whatever languages you're going to, you program the app in, but we need something to be checked on here. Something can be anything you want, put English. for the notes here. This is in our section of setting up details. Language, at least one. And this is all 
the reason I'm talking about all of this is because you need to set this up for the project to work, number one. And number two, it'll be part of the grading. So, of course, you want to get a good grade with all the details. Permissions. Well, in theory, we can set up our project that has the ability to access the camera. We can write code so that when the project starts, it asks you to take a selfie so that your picture is in the app. You can have it set up that in one part of the game, it will ask you to speak the password. So you have to activate the ability of recording audio. Um, for the starting point, just let's just select the first one. We can deal with the other ones later. Our app will have the ability to connect to the internet, maybe to download version 2.0 or to download a new map pack or whatever we want off the internet. The point of this is that we need at least one permission for our project. Permissions, at least one. Internet is the default, which should be fine. So, um, That makes sense, right? And look at all the cool things that could be done where um, the, uh, the project has these capabilities. We could program various capabilities. And um, this is the amazing thing that, uh, that coding lets us do. It lets us... Uh, access the features of our device. It lets us access the camera and audio and Wi-Fi settings and all of these things. So let's select at least one of those. In here, let's go to icons. On this one here, um, we're not going to set up anything at the moment. But let's think about this eventually when we have to go up to the settings over here. Um, we have all of these things to set up that we're doing right now. And one of them is the icons. But we can't do it yet. You know, we've set up language, we set up permissions, and we'll be able to set up these other ones. But on icons here, consider this a little bit later. What's the icon that I'm going to see when it's on my actual device, right? What's the icon that's going to appear here? This is the spot that will let you make these icons. I don't want to do it at the moment because we need to design icons. We'll do that later. But you see, it's straightforward. You say, okay, for my tiny icon, I'm going to go select my icon and it's got to be a PNG file. I don't have one ready. Don't worry about it. For my high quality icon, I'm going to go select my icon that I designed. I don't have one. We'll do it later. And this will be something for later to do. But under icons, set up the icon for your app or later. We can make our icons in Animate. We can make them in Photoshop, in Paint, in wherever. But they have to be a PNG file. And it tells you the dimensions right there. 36 by 36 pixels versus 144, et cetera. Check deployment in a moment. And then we'll jump to general. Output file. This will just show you the same name as your file, I mean, you don't need to do anything there. You can change it if you want. You can call it my game. I would leave it alone. The name of your output file is the name of your project file. That's fine. But notice at the end, it says dot APK. When this project is finished, it will be a final finished Android file. If you were doing this in the iPhone template, I believe it'll save it as IPA. 
uh, iPhone package file, I believe. And then for Android, it's Android package file. So uh, nothing to change here. I'm just showing you that this is what's going to be the name of your file. Just like we have... Just like we have the... Um, Just like we have in our project, we have these various pieces of our project. Eventually, one piece will be a dot APK. Eventually, when we finish the project, that file, we can send it to people. I can email my friend my game. I can send it to them. I can send it to them on WhatsApp or whatever. That file, and that's our game. That's our project. That's the file that we would upload to the app store. That's the file I would put on my website or blog or whatever. That's my game file. The name that is going to appear on the icon is right there, app name. Now for the moment, I don't like that name. The file name doesn't matter, but the app name itself, let's call this something meaningful, Haunted House. That's going to appear below your icon that's where you type it. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Haunted House. That's what our project will be. It's here. Let's see, under general, we have our section of output file. Leave it alone for our app name of your game. For the app ID, leave that one alone. Whatever it says there, that, that's fine, that works. Version, whatever you want here, you want. Right, this is version one of my game. Okay, that's what I want. It's not finished yet. Sometimes what people do when a project is not finished yet, they might do version 0 0.1. It's not finished yet. Then when I do my next code, it'll be version 0.2. Then when it's almost ready, what's that? Our different out stages of the project alpha stages, yeah. And then eventually it's almost ready, 0 0.9. And then when it's ready, 1.0. So whatever you want to put as your numbers here, you can put them what you want. I kind of like also doing like this. You can put, you know, it's not the full version yet, but it's the first version of my code. And then like maybe today's date. Um, today is uh, 24, uh, 06, 17. Do that if you want, because it's not the full version yet. It's the first version of my code with today's date, you know, year, month, date, if you want, whatever, just one, whatever you want to call this thing. I'm going to leave it as it is, but you can name this how you want. I like the date, honestly, myself. I'll keep it easy, but I like the date because that way you can keep track of which version of your code it is. Yeah, you just have to remember to go back to this every time you work on your code and change it. Version label, I forget what this one is actually, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't remember, you don't need to remember. Uh, oh, okay. like, a, like a code name. Of the code. Hmm. So it's like code names or versions of your code and such. Uh, if people want a double way to keep track of their code, you've got version and version label. Version label, you can leave it empty, but version number, you should put something. So put that. Oh, and then look at this aspect ratio. Here is the part that it is setting ourselves up wrong, that when we did the simulator, you know, I thought we designed our project to be landscape, but the simulator was still showing it vertical. So there it is right there. So obviously our project should be landscape because we set ourselves up that our code, I mean, our, our canvas is laying down landscape. So make sure you set this on aspect ratio because again, when you when I do the grading and I check your code and such, and then when I go into the debug, 
And then the simulator pops up. And when the simulator shows me this, where your project is tiny, you didn't change that important detail. And as I said, little details add up to big errors. Also, it affects your grade. If you properly set that, that this should be a landscape project, and then when you debug it, when I check your code, hey, that's correct. It's landscape, just like I wanted it to be. The project won't look tiny. It will be the right size. It's a very important one to do. All of these are important, but that's an important one. Make sure you set that to landscape. Spec ratio, landscape. Now, of course, if you're working on your own project on the side and you want yours to be vertical, leave it on portrait. There's also auto, and it's supposed to be that when you move it around, it will automatically size itself in theory but ours doesn't need to be. You also have to program it so that it detects when you go to different perspectives so that the game graphics change. It's not just auto and it will auto work. You also have to program it to detect that. So set it on landscape because our project is landscape. Optionally full screen. Usually when you play a game, it takes over completely the screen, right? When you're using any other app, you know, if I go to Google Chrome or whatever, if I go to Reddit or whatever, um, I still see the battery level, my Wi-Fi, I see my notifications, I see my Android buttons down there. If I want my game to take over the screen completely, well, there's the button there, full screen. You can do whatever you want there. You probably want to turn that on to get every millimeter of the, of the screen for your project. But yes. Auto orientation, uh, I forget what that one does, but I think it's related to your auto part over here, which is not totally auto. You still have to program it. So auto orientation, just leave it off. Hello. Render mode G uh, CPU versus GPU and direct and auto. Just leave that alone. That's fine. What processor is this working on? Just leave that alone. That's fine. What are these other include files? That's pretty advanced. Just leave that alone. But this is an important step to do as you set up your project. I click OK. Save. Debug, just so that you see your project actually in landscape. So you can see it like that. Get all of that properly, you should then see the simulator there where it shows your message down on there of your trace. You should see your project landscape, not vertical. This is, this is all part of our setting up. Skip. Um, tab of uh, deployment. We'll do that after the break. Break is coming up. That one ties into debugging on real devices. If you're able to do all of this so far, you're on track for the break. Right after the break, then we'll do the other things that are necessary there. After the break, this is when we're going to pass out some of these tablets so that everyone can see on real devices. But we're on to our first break here. So questions at home, questions here in person. Is everyone on track pretty well so far? So basic setup. I'm obviously going through it in very much detail, but then uh, it'll go faster on future lectures. You need to be able to do all of this yourself. Again, it's easy when you follow along, but to under, to know that you really understand something, you should be able to do it on your own. And therefore, that's why we're talking about this in detail. 
All right, it's 1.10. We'll take our first break. And uh, we'll be back at 1.20, where we will set up our next aspects of our basic setup.
All right, let's move on here. So the um, there was a tab there of deployment that we haven't done yet, we will do and we need to do, but that ties into the next idea of debugging on real devices. So far, when we debug, we've been debugging on the simulator. Overall, you'll be able to do pretty much all the work on the simulator. It's actually often a little bit faster if you do it on the simulator, but to get the full experience um, using checking your project, viewing your project on a real device is nice because then you can actually see it on a nice actual screen and such. As I've been saying, well, when we created this project, we are all using the, uh, we're all using the, uh, the Android, the Android template. And if you've got an iPhone at home, uh, again, for class purposes, you want to still do the Android version. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to, to work with. If you're here in person, you'll be able to borrow our tablets for the next step. If you're at home, uh, I need to do a little sub lecture uh, for you at home to be able to do this at home. In the lab here, we've got ready to go a bunch of tablets to let you borrow. So I'm gonna do a little pause here. For those of you that are here in person, I'm gonna let you borrow one of these tablets before I go on with the lecture. So I'm gonna give all of you here one of these, it's, it's all in the box. What you wanna do is you wanna get it out of the box. Uh, you wanna turn it on. There's a button on the right side, a power button. You wanna hold it for a moment until it turns on, let it turn on and just let it turn on. And then I'll show you the next steps in a moment. All of you wanna lose. Well, all of you here in person, uh, just uh, on the right side, right? You've got these tablets. Uh, I think they're all exactly the same. So on the right side, press and hold. You got a volume buttons, and then a power button. Just press and hold the power button for a moment until you see the screen pop up. Yeah. Side. So let that start up for a moment. It'll take a little moment to start up. These should automatically turn on. These should automatically log in. No need to worry about any of that. But in a moment, this will start up. So at home, again, just wait for a moment. I have a specific steps for you at home on your own devices. Now, those of you that are here also, and are, you, you can use my device. You can also use your device. I'll cover how to use your device later today. But, you know, we spent thousands of dollars uh, to get these for the class, so we might as well use that money. Uh, just like we spent thousands of dollars for those drawing tablets. Um, so still waiting for this to start up. It's going to start up in one moment. So the thing, one of the reasons why I'm also saying to do this on an Android is because the the, the sort of connectivity between the two, the computer and the tablet, is a little bit easier to set up than with an, with an iPhone. Now, obviously iPhone, Android, they're both great, whatever you use. I use both. Currently my main phone is an Android, but I use both. But I do have to say that sometimes things are a little easier on Android. Sometimes things are a little bit more secure on iPhone, but then that also means slightly more difficult to do some advanced things on the iPhone. On Android, sometimes things are a little bit easier to do, but sometimes it's slightly less secure. Um, on any of those details, you don't have to really worry about it, but in the lab here, we're going to have the tablets for you. So, you know, it's a tablet and such. And these Androids have been set up in developer mode. So let me make some notes here. Bugging on real devices on Android phones, right? We've got uh, Samsung and Motorola. Google brands. Uh, on the Android phones, you activate developer mode 
to connect animate with your phone or tablet to debug the project. Um, we're going to put in the chat a little bit later a link to how do I turn on developer mode on Android. We'll put it in the chat in a moment. Um, but th that's already been set up on these tablets for class. Developer mode is already activated. If you want to use your own device, we'll show you the instructions on that in a moment. So once your device is on, you also have the USB cable. Um, this, is not a, this is not one of the cool USB-C cables. It's the USB-A or B or whatever it is. You need to plug in the cable. It only goes in one way. It's at the top with one of the little um, uh, phone plugs up there. So plug that in, that cable up in there. That plugs in, of course, and then find a plug on your computer. Maybe you've got one on the side, on the left side there. There should be one free. If you're using the one on the left, you might have to plug in the back. But on my case, I've got side plug on the left here. Plug that in. Now, um, it might pop up on the device right away that it says here, use USB for file transfer. So if you see on my particular webcam here on these particular tablets, uh, it's, it is popping up there with a yes or no. We want a yes. If you accidentally click cancel or clicked on something else, unplug it and replug it, we do want the pop-up that asks, do you want to do this advanced thing to copy your game onto the tablet? Well, yes, of course. Use USB for file transfer? Yes. Click yes on that. Yes on that. Okay, so that's ready on the tablet. Again, if you didn't click a yes on that, replug it in. It should pop up. That will work if your Android device is set on developer mode. Again, if you're trying to do this on your own Android, you need to activate you need to activate developer mode first. I'll show how to do that later, after we get the link into the chat. But we have here. Plug in tablet, click yes, speed file transfer. Tablet is ready. Back on animate, back to the file Android settings. Now we can look at this deployment tab. Jump to the bottom here first. Got after publishing, air runtime, etc. We'll start at the bottom. Install application on the connected device, yes or no. The launch application on the connected device, yes or no. Well, here we want, yes, after publishing, yes, install on the connected device. When you click that on, it may do another pop-up on the tablet over here, which is saying, allow USB debugging, yes and no. And there's also a little check mark, remember this. I don't want to click this every single time. So that's a good idea. Again, showing you right here on the, on the screen. As soon as I clicked on the after publishing install on connected device, this pops up to confirm that. I want to click on the always allow. Again, if I tap on another side and accidentally click cancel, unplug it, replug it. Um, but once this popped up here, I want to click on the check mark. Yes, remember this. I don't want it to ask me every time. And then click OK. But then I further see here, launch your app on the device. It's not just OK. Connect. I connect my device and animate, but also put my project on the device. So yes, launch. And might have like three devices plugged in. Uh, we're okay at the moment, Angie, Angie. Okay. Um, 
the uh, launch on the device. And then you might have a variety of devices there. I can have like seven tablets plugged in or whatever and check my results on different devices. That, that's fine. But obviously there's only one plugged in. Whatever number yours is, is the correct one, I guess. So you want to select that. Back to our notes here, plug in the tablet, click yes. Back to, back to Air, Android settings, deployment uh, tab. All of these need something here, but the after publishing section. Short answer is turn them all on. Turn on the first one, then the second, then the third, and then on the device, USB again. Remember, click the little check mark to remember that. That's the after publish section. The air runtime section, nothing to do there. The default of embed air with runtime, nothing to change there. Leave it as is. On the Android deployment type, nothing really to change there either. Device release versus debug, leave it as is. Device release. So I made no changes on those sections. This top one's very important. Certificate, password, and remember. So what's happening here is that we need to confirm we are the app creator. We are the programmer that made this app. And we're going to sign a certificate that proves that. That sounds very complicated. It's not. This is just our credential, our password, that this is our app. So we have to provide it with our credential file. It's like uh, you know, I need to show it my ID. You know, here's my ID right here. So I need to show my ID right there and then give my password. So what ID, what file? We need to create that ID, that certificate, that credential, and then put our password. So this is a couple of little steps. But again, all these little steps add up. So within certificate... We kind of have to do two branches right here. First time, and then later times. First time, create certificate. Right now we're doing the first time. Later times, use the certificate. You're going to create a file. You're going to create a credential. You're going to create an ID. And you're going to save it, of course. You're going to upload it to your, to your Google Drive or put it on a flash drive or something. You're going to keep this credential, and you're going to use it on future days. If you delete the file, lose the file, okay, you're going to recreate it. No big deal. But it is best to create this file and keep using it. If you forget your password, there's no way to fix the password. This is a, you know, this is a, what happens with your ID or your driver's license, whatever, you lose it. You can't make your own. You have to ask the government to give you a new one. Same thing here. You're going to create this credential. You can't just change it or update it or whatever. It's an official sort of thing that you have to recreate. So you can't retrieve your password. So remember your password. Right. So we, we're, going to we're going to click this create. It asks you to fill in some, some things here. What's your name as the programmer? This can be fake, of course, like I'm setting it up, but you probably want real credentials here. What's your organizational unit or job title? You can set a programmer. So well, I'm the CEO. You can set this up as what else? Uh, code Ninja. You know, it doesn't have to be anything official or whatever. You can set this up as whatever you feel your organizational unit or job title is creator, sure. What's your organizational name? This is, it assumes you have a company, a game developer studio, and yeah, this is again up to you. 
You can set this up as you wish, uh, whatever you want to call this. So, you know, this is Jones Games Inc. Whatever. You, um, you are vouching that you are the creator of this project. So you can call this as you wish. Create as many of these self-signed certificates as you wish. You will not be able to change them later, but you can create ones later. Where are you operating in? Whatever you want. So I'm going to leave the default. A password. It can be anything you want, but to make it simple, I'm going to make a password that is terrible so I don't have to remember it. You should write a correct password, a good password. Nothing to change on type. Validity, leave that as is. You can change that as you wish. Uh, but that is saying that this certificate, this credential will, will work for 25 years, all the way to the year 2049. But I think you have to put at least five years. I don't think you can put like one year. So leave that as is, it doesn't matter. Save as, let's browse. This is just making sure that it's gonna save in the same folder as your current project named as whatever dot P12. Change that name if you want. You can call that certificate dot P12. You can call it my credential dot P12. You can call it, you know, your game studio dot P12, whatever you want, as long as it's a .p12 file. You're saving it where you think you're saving it. So all of that makes sense, right? Who is the creator of this game, basically? And then we're saving this credential file. Like, okay, it'll do some calculations for a moment. It looks like it might freeze for a moment, but it's going to do some calculations, uh, make this file, encrypt it, and then save it where you told it. My particular case, I saved it in my project folder. My project folder, I've got all of these pieces of my app. My my uh, original animate file. Every time I do a debug or test movie, I get this temporary Swift file. I just created this P12 file. All of the details that are being stored inside of this publish screen are being saved in this XML file. While my project is running, a recovery file is temporarily being stored in case the app crashes. But this P12 file, it's full of compressed code. But everything that you typed was compressed and encrypted, so there's nothing to look at. XML file is plain old XML. It can be opened in most apps, but there's nothing to do there. It's just, hey, those are the things that I typed into the screen. They were typed into code. Swift file, nothing to do with that. Recover file, nothing to do with that. But anyway, here, self-signed certificate was created. Okay. So as we've been doing debug in the simulator, we will be able to do debug on the device. You need to do one more thing. Well, put your password that you just made up and tell it to remember you. So it's going to use your credential. It's going to use your ID with the password you made up. Have it remember you so it doesn't ask you every time. We're going to, de we're going to deploy this to your device. It's going to embed. It's going to go on this device here. If you see your device, you might have to refresh. Like, okay. Save. Let's go up to debug, debug movie, and now we should have a new option. 
because we only had Air Debug Launcher Mobile and Desktop a moment ago. Now we should have Debug Movie on Device. And it should be the device that is plugged in, whatever the serial number is. If you don't see it, click Refresh. So we see the device. We're going to click on it, which will get the check mark. When something has a check mark, you can uh, do the shortcut of just debug movie or keyboard. Let's do that. If this all worked and you select your movie, I mean your um, device, this will take longer than a debug simulator. So if you want to do quick testing of your code, do the simulator. As we're seeing, this is taking a moment. And the first time you do this, it'll take the longest. Let's say it's going to take one whole minute. But subsequent times, it'll be faster and faster. Eventually, something's going to start to pop up here. And then something pops up here. Don't worry about that. Just click OK. You close that. Ooh, it's on my device. And ooh, I'm seeing my output down there. There's my trace message. But there's my project on my real device. Obviously, I can't do anything yet. But all of this effort is to see your projects on real devices. You're still going to see your trace commands in the output when we click to click, when we set up to click a button, tap a button or drag or whatever, it'll work on the real device. When we program it to, you know, record my voice, uh, we can do that. We can have it take a photo of me, a selfie, so that my face is in the app. We can program it to detect when I move it around like this because I need to do the puzzle where the water needs to go down the well, and I'm going to move my phone around to make the water go down the well. Real device. We can click the stop debug over here or debug end. Stop. Back to our project. This closes it off of the device. I make any changes here in my project. Write the code, save the code, run the code, or draw your drawing, save your drawing, run your drawing. So I made some quick change. I'm just going Super Saiyan over here. And then I'm going to save, debug. It remembered the last one I picked. There's a check mark. So I can just go quickly to debug, divide, debug, debug, or shortcut on the keyboard, control shift, enter. Send it off to my device. Again, this will be slower than on the simulator, but it's really nice to see your result on the device. And you'll be able to do 99% of things on the simulator. A couple of things will not be doable on the simulator. You will have to do them on a real device. We'll get to those things later. Got the splash screen coming up. We need to close that. You can just press the space bar as a quick way or click the or click it. I'm going to do space bar as a quick OK. And then it runs on the device, the latest version of my of my drawing and my code and whatever on my device. So it's a setup. It's something that we will need to do every time we come into the lab. We're going to activate that Air SDK. Even if you create your file and take it home and come back, if you try to open the file, it'll say, Air, Air SDK is not active. I cannot open this file. Every time you come to the lab, you're going to have to do this. When you're going to have to do this, help manage SDK. You're going to have to do this part here, and then you can open your file, and then it'll work. But if you don't have the Air SDK here, it won't know how to open your file. And then every time you want to test your project on a device, you're going to have to go back to the file Android settings and make sure that the deployment is all set up correctly, that your P12 file is found, your password is typed, and that it knows the device is connected every time you come into the lab. At home, because your computer will remember what, what you did to it, ours forget every time you turn them off. At home, you set this up one time, it'll keep remembering because it's on your own computer. On our computers, it'll forget. It remember the other stuff about language and permissions in general, it should, but it'll forget the deployment part because it forgets that you connected this 
device. All of these settings being stored in your folder in this XML file. So that's why it's important as always, make a folder for your project, all the pieces of your project in that folder and things should work better. Keep your certificate there, keep your deployment settings there. Later when we work, later when we add icons, we'll put our icons in the folder. First time, create certificate to create your P12 file. Keep it. Or you need to recreate it. And on later times, this is load your P12 file. Password. Come back next time. We have to again remind it. Okay, here's my here's my file. Here's my password. We have to browse next time. We'll have to browse for it. That's easy. But this first time we have to create it, save our file. Future times we're going to browse for it. Um, we usually want to plug in the tablet first before we turn on animate because it might not detect it. If it doesn't detect it, you can refresh it. But it's usually a good idea when we come back to future lectures. Uh, we're going to. Uh, if, if you want to borrow one of our tablets, you'll borrow the tablet, you'll plug it in, make sure it all detects it and such, and then we will do these other things. Okay. Uh, this all assumes you are using our tablets. If you want to use your own Android device, have some extra instructions. And again, when I activate the module three this week, I'll put them, I'll put it in there. But um, if you want to use your own device, to do this first, let me just pull this up here, this link. So I'll put this in the chat, I'll put it in my notes, I'll put it on Canvas. If you want to use your own Android phone, you have to follow these various steps here. I'm not going to do every step, I'll just talk about it in general. But on your Android phones, there's some steps you need to do to activate developer options. The ability for us to transfer our game from the computer to the Android requires you to turn on developer options. There's a few steps here, depending on which version of Android. Follow the steps. It's telling you if you've got a Samsung, HTC, generic, etc. Follow those steps. It's going to have you activate developer options. And it's going to have you activate enable USB debugging. There's going to be a screen there, enable USB debugging. So again, on your own, and this is when you can ask for help. But you have to activate activate dev mode, activate USB debugging. If you want to use a real device on your game. You don't have to for the class. Again, I've got an iPhone. How do I do it on the iPhone? I'll, we'll find the file for you on how to do it on an iPhone in a moment. But whether you use an Android, a physical Android device or a physical iPhone device, it will not affect you in the class because we will be able to check our projects in the simulator. If your project works in the simulator, it'll work on the device. 
Obviously, it's more impressive on the real device, but this is a, is a faster debugger, and this will do 99% of what we need to check. This is what I will be using when I check the homework and such. But if you want the icing on the cake about checking it on a real device, there's a few steps to set up. For class, if you get it to run on the simulator, perfectly good. So sometimes people struggle about, oh, I can't get it on my device. Mine is weird and it keeps rejecting it and I don't know what to do. Don't stress about that because the simulator will work. So again, the big idea for this week of material is setting ourselves up for a project. We saw all of these steps. You're going to need to be able to do these steps on your own. And then there will be a homework, which is not active just yet on Canvas. I need to, when the lecture ends in a moment, I'm going to activate it. There's a little snafu. So I will activate that in a moment. But if you're able to do everything that we did today, you're going to turn that in. And I, I will confirm that you're able to create an animate project in the air um, template that it is a landscape project, that you have the layer for code, everything that we learned, that you went to your uh, Android settings, all of that. I'm gonna check all of that for your file. I'm not gonna look for your project to be anything yet, except for this basic starting template with all of these sub steps. Uh, one thing um, for the homework, you're gonna, in, in future assignments, you're gonna need to, I don't think we did this on previous assignments, but you're gonna need to zip up your folder. You're going to need to turn in your whole folder. On previous assignments, you are either turning in an FLA file or a graphic file. But for future assignments, and I'll put it in the assignment, you're going to need to send your whole folder. Now, I'll show it right now, and I'll also put it on the, on the homework. But to zip a file on Windows, on the Mac, it's slightly different. But on Windows, you're going to need to, on the actual folder itself, not on the individual files, on the whole folder itself, you need to right-click, and then you've got, um, on Windows 11, it's right there, compress to zip file. On Windows 10, I believe you have to right click, send to compressed zip. On the Mac, I believe also you right click and it says compress file, something about compression on the Mac. So it's gonna be on the assignment, but when you've completed the requirements of the assignment, you're gonna zip the whole folder it's going to create a zip file. If you try to upload a folder to Canvas, it won't work. But if you upload a zip, that will work. Your zip file contains your whole folder with all the pieces. You're going to, in future assignments, turn in the whole folder. If you don't listen to this and try to upload each individual file, that will affect your grade. Again, the details of the grading matter. If you don't get full credit, it was probably some detail you missed. I put the details there on for a reason. Make sure you follow the details. So zipping a folder is just right click, compress the zip. And you're gonna turn in the zip file, turn in the zipped file. Sometimes people, after you click this, after you set up the zip file, you then, you know, you, I want to double check everything's in there. As long as as long as you see everything in your zip file, that should be correct. And your zip file will probably have an icon of a zipper compared to a regular folder. And it'll probably say .zip. Sometimes on some people's computers, it doesn't show the extensions like that. And what's the difference between these two? They're both named week three. Well, the icon is showing that this is a zip file and it probably says it's compressed and a regular folder will not say that it's a zip folder. But if you do want it to have the extension part, this is on, on Windows. You probably have to go to your view, show, file extensions. So 
to see the extensions to confirm it's the right type of file. Just like when you're working on your projects over here, if you don't have view extensions, okay, I see this file and that file, they've got the exact same name, different icons. It's very useful to see the extensions. As I can see, oh, there's my P12 credential file. There's my FLA work in progress file. There's my temporary file, et cetera. So this will all be noted in the in the assignment, but once I activate that, all the details you need to do, you're gonna upload a zip. And details will be added soon. But we'll wrap up in just a moment. We spent all of this time to make sure the basics are set up because if none of these basics are set up properly, if, if all of these basics are not set up properly, the future things will not work. So definitely get help from me, get help from the assistants, ask on the chat, request a Zoom one-on-one, -on -one, uh, come in person in the lab time. This needs to be set up this week. So we'll end the lecture at this point. You can practice what we did here. You can ask questions. Uh, be on the lookout in a moment. I will activate the week three. It's almost ready. And then um, remember, no class on Wednesday. Wednesday is a holiday but we're gonna have extra credit. So check on Wednesday what the extra credit is. We'll come back next week. And then on next week, we're gonna take this file and just start making this game little by little, code by code, scene by scene, idea by idea. Hey, celebrities Wednesday. Wednesday is the celebration or the holiday of Juneteenth. A little extra credit on the, on the meaning of Juneteenth. Be on the lookout for that on this. I'll probably put it as an announcement and there'll be some extra credit. So we'll wrap up at this point. You can stay for lab, practice, et cetera. There's a homework due tomorrow. If you haven't done the homework yet, work on the homework. And then when we come back next time, we're, we're gonna start to work on our game.